Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Watson and in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview and some context for The Prelude, which is a poem that was written by William Wordsworth. The extract that is studied is part of AQA's GCC English Literature Power and Conflict Syllabus. In this excerpt, Wordsworth recounts an event from his childhood when he stole a small boat and rowed into the middle of a lake at night. So, in order to understand this poem and the deeper meaning of it, it's important that we understand what the Romantics were concerned about when they were writing. So, the Romantics were very concerned with nature and did not believe that man had authority over nature, but, in fact, the other way around. Romantics believed that mankind needed to go back to nature to get away from the idea that thoughts and ideas are more important than feelings. Wordsworth believed that nature was more enduring or lasting than civilization, and romantics often wrote about the ordinary person and situation, as opposed to the extraordinary. So when Wordsworth was a young man, he, along with many other romantics, became obsessed with existential questions. This means that he was exploring big philosophical ideas about human life and spirituality, such as why are we here? What is my place in the world? Do I have free choice? Or is my life ruled by fate? When he was 28, he began to write a poem called The Prelude, in which he explored some of his feelings about his identity as an ordinary man and his place in the universe. In the poem, he often looks to nature for answers. So this is an extract from a very long autobiographical poem. In this bit, a young Wordsworth found a boat hidden beside a lake. He stole the boat and headed out onto the lake on a midnight joyride. It was a beautiful scene, with the boy himself admiring the surrounding ridges and the stars and the sky beyond. But then this peaceful image took a scary turn. To understand what happened here, it's helpful to keep in mind the geometry of this lakeside landscape. When rowing a boat, the oarsman actually faces backward, so in order to steer a straight line, he needed to pick some spot on the horizon and keep that spot directly behind the boat. Wordsworth fixed his view upon the summit of a craggy ridge. To begin with, the boat was still close to the willow covert at position A on the diagram, and as the boy looks up, he saw nothing but the craggy ridge and the stars beyond. But then, as the boy rowed out, the sight lines changed. Behind the first craggy ridge, a huge peak, black and huge, as if with voluntary power instinct, upreared its head. Imagine how this would look from the point of view of the boy. As he moved from point A to point B on the diagram, the huge peak would appear to rise up from behind the first craggy steep. The sight frightened the boy, but the harder he rode, the more the huge peak seemed to come after him. The peak wasn't really moving, of course, it was just a trick of perspective. The further away the boy got from the ridge, the more of the peak he could see. This created the optical illusion that the peak was chasing him and growing. Scared, he turned back and returned the boat. So some of the key themes that Wordsworth explores in this poem is, of course, power. So how immense nature's power is compared to that power of humanity and how weak and feeble humanity seems in the face of nature. It goes without saying that another key theme is, of course, nature itself. It's nature that prompts Wordsworth in this poem to have something of an existential crisis. He realises just how incredible nature is and also how terrifying it can be. That leads into another couple of themes, this idea of beauty versus fear. In the early stages of the poem, the boy is describing the lake and the stars and just nature in general is this incredibly beautiful, gracious thing, this wonderful experience. But as soon as that peak begins to appear from behind the craggy ridge, that very quickly turns to fear. He's overwhelmed by nature's power and just the stature of nature and the illusion that's created. It's almost personifying nature as if it's chasing him and that scares him even more. And it is this fear that triggers a sense of existentialism. He begins to question everything he believed about nature, 
about the universe, about his place within the universe. And that, of course, links to the kinds of questions that the Romantics were asking themselves. That's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave a like just to let me know. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.